The greeters today are Lori Murphy and Beth Anderson, and our scripture reader is Kathy Welch. It's on. It's on. Coffee Hour this morning is hosted by Elfie and Bernie Hummel. So we encourage you. Maybe Jeff will crank it up a little bit. And I know Elfie has some to There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay. It wasn't me. It was a, tech, a technology problem. There'll be a service with communion to celebrate Holy Thursday at 7 o'clock and a noon prayer service on Good Friday. Both services will be both in person and live streamed. We remind you that Easter Sunday worship will be at 9.30 a.m., both in person and online. And those who really uh, want to get up early, uh, sunrise service on the town green will be conducted at 6 a.m. I'm also going to ask to uh, make this reminder notice on behalf of the uh, auction committee's B team. As many of you have likely read in our window or in an email from the church, we are hoping to have a church fundraiser in the form of an online auction. This would be our third annual auction fundraiser. Last year they raised almost $2,500 for the church. We had winning bidders from all over the state and received photos of about a third of the items so far for this year's auction, donated by four families. They include a, a great variety, which is a good start, leather bomber jacket, piano, china, coach bags, crystal items, and small furniture. However, they, they need more items to be able to move forward. So if you have items you're able and willing to donate that would be desirable for such an auction, please see a member of the auction committee's B team, which are Patience Manassi, Martha Butterworth, Priscilla Bradford, and Martin Benassi. Welcome. Take a deep breath. Look around the sanctuary. Notice the palm branches and feel the excitement that is building. Feel the joy, gratitude, and hope, and recognize a glimmer of the welcome that God feels for you. Following our prelude, our worship will begin outside the front steps with the blessing of the palms and the procession. Whoever you are and wherever you are in life's journey, you are welcomed here in our gathered worship worship this morning. Thank you. Simon, all who are able, please assemble outside and we will have the blessing of the palms, followed by the processional. I think this is on. Yeah. Beautiful out here. Oops, 
here. You know what? You want to use the railing? O oh God, who in Jesus Christ triumphantly entered Jerusalem, heralding a week of pain and sorrow, be with us now as we follow the way of the cross. In these events of defeat and victory, you have sealed the closeness of death and resurrection, of humiliation and exaltation. We thank you for these palm branches that promise to become for us symbols of matrodom and majesty. Bless them and us that their use this day may announce in our time that Christ has come and that Christ will come again. Amen. Come, Christ Jesus. We join with the crowd that eagerly awaited the coming of Jesus. This is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Fulfilling prophecy, Jesus entered the city riding humbly on a donkey. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Jesus' followers were excited, filled with anticipation. Yet, within a few short days, they were scattered, disillusioned, and frightened, unwilling to follow as far as Christ would have them go. We too long to join the triumphal procession, only to find ourselves burdened by the past, fearful of the future, Reluctant to accept the way of the cross. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Yet this Palm Sunday, we receive palm branches, a reminder of the welcome offered to Jesus as he traveled toward the cross. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Like the crowd in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, we take our palm branches and greet Jesus, shouting, Blessed is he, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest.
You may be seated. I think. Please join me in the response to call to worship found in your order of service. Cry out, people of faith. Rejoice and praise God. Cry out, people of faith, for your Savior draws near to Jerusalem. Blessed is Jesus Christ, who did not turn back for fear of the cross. Let us praise the God who loves us, sharing Christ's sufferings and facing with courage our path of faith. Hosanna, God saves. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. Let us pray together for peace. O oh God, lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let your peace fill our hearts, our homes, our world, our universe. Amen. And please join me in the unison prayer of confession. O oh God, we sing and praise you, happy of heart and strong of spirit when we are among others who praise you too. But in times of stress, we seek scapegoats to be targets for our anger. We betray those we love and who have loved us, and we turn against you, too busy to seek you, too selfish to obey you. Your compassion is without bounds, O oh God, for you forgive us again and again. You restore us to a right spirit and bring us together to worship you again. God of steadfast love, teach us how to be steadfast. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And let us please pause now for a moment of silent and personal confession. This is the good news. God is eager to forgive our sins and rejoices each time we try again. From our gratitude comes a new life. And let us all say, thanks be to God. And let us continue together in prayer, offering our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. to worship, we just said, the very stone would, stones would cry out. What? How can stones cry out? But let's look at it this way. Have you ever had something so important to say that you couldn't keep it inside? How about something so exciting to share that you interrupted people to say it? 
or something you blurted out so quickly that no one could even understand what you said. That's happened to all of us, I think, even the adults, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So today is Palm Sunday, and this is the day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, and his fo- followers shouted, Hosanna, and they waved palm branches and sang praises to God. But not everybody was happy. The religious leaders were angry about the crowd being so noisy and told Jesus to tell his followers to be quiet. And Jesus said if his followers had to be silent, the stones would shout out instead. That's how exciting it was for the people to sing Hosanna and shout praises to God and have Jesus riding into town on his donkey. So when you think about this story, I want you to think about the most exciting part of God's story for you. And if you shouted out something to someone, what would you say? So today, to add to our garden, I have little, what do you think? What did I just talk about? Yes, I have stones. So I have pretty little stones. And you're going to take a stone and you're going to add it to your garden at home. All right? And when you look at that stone, it just looks like an ordinary stone, just like maybe the stones Jesus was referring to. But the idea of a plain stone shouting is extraordinary, just like the good news of Jesus is extraordinary. All right? So the stone's going to remind us about extraordinary things that God and Jesus can do. All right? So let's say a little prayer and then go to Sunday school. Sing. Sorry. Sorry. Sing first, then Sunday school. But first we'll have a prayer, then we'll sing. (laughs) Thank you. God of the ordinary and the extraordinary, thank you for the good news of Jesus. Thank you for giving us reasons to shout even when it seems like the whole world is telling us to be quiet. Remind us to look for the extraordinary, even in people and things that might seem ordinary. Amen. Stand up and sing, remember? I forgot too. <laughs> okay, choir, adult choir is going to put it in behind you.
Now those who are able, please stand as we uh, celebrate the hymn number, Voices United 123, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. first lesson this morning is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, reading from the 50th chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. Listen for the word of God. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. The second lesson this morning is taken from the gospel according to Luke, reading from the 19th chapter, beginning at the 28th verse. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, 
Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Next up will be John Tiber with a, a brief meditation of some kind. But first, I have to apologize for Kathy that uh, I interjected the hymn ahead of ahead of schedule. So, uh, my bad. But the, she was, she, but she carried on like a trooper, which I appreciate. Okay, before we begin, uh, I'd like to ask everyone to turn around and face the camera and wave to Scott. I'm sure he'd appreciate seeing everyone and be very happy to see your expression there. <laughs> Today we celebrate Palm Sunday, and this is truly a joyous occasion. It marks Jesus' entry into the city of Jerusalem. But let's think back a while and see how we got to this point. It seems as though we just celebrated Christmas, the birth of Jesus. And next week, we will observe the death and resurrection of Jesus. In fact, there are only 113 days between Christmas and Easter this year. In reality, there are some 30 years between the birth of Jesus and what we are celebrating today. Most of this in-between time is totally unaccounted for. There is one brief mention of Jesus in the temple. There's a brief mention of Jesus in the temple uh, as a 12-year-old boy. And that's really only referenced in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus' public ministry takes place over only about three years. And that has been calculated based on uh, references in the Gospels to three Passover observances taking place during that ministry. Once Jesus begins his ministry, he does so somewhat discreetly. He doesn't really draw attention to himself very often, especially when he is performing miracles. Almost every miracle ends with Jesus telling the people not to say anything about what he has done. And not everyone heeded his instructions. Although he has tried to be discreet, nevertheless, Jesus has drawn the attention of the religious leaders and the Roman leaders. And now we come to today, when Jesus decides to enter the city of Jerusalem, marking his first major public appearance. Now, a military leader or a king would enter with a lot of fanfare and in all likelihood would be riding on a powerful horse 
or riding in a magnificent carriage with lots of attendants. But here comes Jesus riding on a donkey? And not just any donkey, but a colt, a colt that had never been ridden before. Not a magnificent, powerful stallion, but a simple pack animal, a beast of burden. Was there a hidden message there? Is the colt perhaps carrying the burdens accepted by Jesus? This isn't the first time a donkey appears in scripture. As early as the book of Numbers, a donkey plays a central role. And not just any donkey, but a talking donkey. A donkey that got tired of being beaten by his owner and finally spoke up in protest. In his version of the Palm Sunday story, Matthew quotes Zechariah 9, verse 9. <clears throat> Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And similarly in John 12, 15, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Is Jesus entering Jerusalem as this promised king? There are many in the crowd who certainly believe this. And there are some who fear that this might be true. Jesus is favored by the Galileans where much of his ministry had taken place, but he is suspected by the Pharisees and the Romans as a threat to their power. There's a vision of a massive crowd welcoming Jesus to the city. Is he the savior that they have been waiting for? the Savior who was promised in the scriptures? Many in the crowd laid their cloaks on the ground for Jesus as he passed by, as was accustomed to welcome a king or other royalty or to salute a successful military leader. Is Jesus the king they have been waiting for? And some accounts of this day describe people waving palm branches just as we have done today. Ironically, there's no mention of palms in today's selected scripture version for this account. John is the only gospel, uh, the, the only gospel author who specifically mentions palm branches. Maybe today we should have been throwing cloaks on the ground. While most of the people in the crowd appear to be quite joyous in celebrating the arrival of Jesus, perhaps lurking in the background are some who are not very thrilled to see how popular this man is. And these might begin to plan a different welcome for Jesus. No one in Jerusalem really knows what to expect in the days ahead. Unlike the people of Jerusalem, we know what is going to happen. We have read the next chapter in this story. But just for today, let's set that knowledge aside. Let's spend the day thinking of the joyous occasion, just like the crowd of people in Jerusalem. Let's wave our palms and welcome Jesus. Amen. Thank you, John. It is on that time where we share the joys and concerns of our congregation this week. We started just with the flowers that air palms, blessed and raised up high in joyful celebration of the Messiah who comes to us. We next pray for those listed in our bulletin this week. Linda Shannon, Marcia Folds, Marlene Bolonio, Lorraine Burge, Shirley Ryan, Joyce Bolonio, Ellen Robert, and Treffel Robert. We also ask for the prayers of the family of Winifred Miller and prayers for the family of Ralph Franco Sr. We wish a happy birthday to Don Adams II coming up on the 15th, to Bethy Gumbart celebrating her 90th on the 17th, and to Carla Hill also on April 17th. And lastly, a happy anniversaries to 
the Mayhews, Rich and Sandy tomorrow, the following day on Tuesday to Ann and Herb Snyder, which I believe is 64 what it, uh, years of bliss, which is wonderful. Drew and Heather Mastracchio on the 15th, and the Banassis, Martin and Patience, on April 16th. We ask for prayers for those among us in our congregation, our families, and our acquaintances who are struggling from cancer. They include Delaine Smith, Roy, Joseph Pesivius, Janet, Chris, Debbie, Misty, Jordan and her dad, Anna, Karen, and Jackie. And some specific prayers that have come into us this week. We mentioned before the precious life of Winifred Miller, who is the aunt of Nancy Mahoney. We pray for God's gentle comfort for all the family. We celebrate the life of Maddie, beloved dog of Hans Hansen and Mary Johnston. We are thankful for Maddie's rousing welcome in the household of God, even, on, even as Hans and Mary feel her absence in theirs. And as mentioned previously, we also give thanks for the life of Ralph Franco Sr., the uncle and godfather of Marlene Bologna. We ask God's strength and gentle comfort for his wife, Pat Franco, for Marlene, and for all the family. We offer prayers for Nancy, my wife Joan, and for Scott as they recover from COVID-19. We wish a safe journey to the Outer Banks for Tim Pfeiffer and return. And lastly, uh, on a personal note, uh, my daughter-in-law, uh, Cheryl Ducko's dad, uh, Dale Sharp, suffered a serious fall last night at home, and he's in the hospital now with uh, some very serious injuries. We pray for his, his slow and, and full recovery. We lift up earnest prayers for peace in Ukraine. We pray for soldiers and civilians, for refugees and those who welcome them, for healthcare workers and emergency responders and volunteers and neighbors. We pray that negotiations for an end to the attacks and bombardments will be successful. Let us begin our prayer in silence. Holy God, we pray with renewed joy for the determined hope of Jesus and the crowds as they entered Jerusalem, celebrating the life-giving promise of Jesus and struggling at the threats of the occupying authorities. We ask your healing power for those who need it and your peace and comfort for those who are anxious and afraid. We pray for your gentle embrace of those who mourn. Hear the prayers of our hearts as well as those of our lips. Save us, revive us, and guide us, we pray, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Being a true Christian is to offer up our lives and deaths to God. Our gifts are a sign of the offering of our whole selves. Please stand as we lift our hearts in gratitude for this morning's offering. God of all power and glory, we thank you that Jesus Christ came to Jerusalem, not with a sword to challenge the power of this world, but with love, announcing the good news of your kingdom. Enable your church to choose your ways, winning the victory over sin and death. Establish your righteous realm on earth. Use our gifts and our lives to your glory, through Jesus, who comes in your name. Amen. And greeting together with Scott in spirit, may the peace of God in Jesus Christ be with you always. Please now enjoy our last hymn, Voices 335, at the name of Jesus.
May you be blessed into the week to come with tenderness for your sorrows, energy for your hope, a sweet awareness of the world around you, and recognition of the face of God in everyone you meet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the deep peace of the Holy Spirit fill you and abide with you. Amen. We extend special thanks this morning to our guest trumpet player, Reginald Mayo III. <laughs> and lastly, permission to podcast or stream the music in this service was obtained from one license with license A719615.